Good morning, friends. So, is it morning? No, it's... Well, yeah, it's still morning. So, I'm going to continue with my cheese. I've got my plastic ready. This cheese has been out for 24 hours, and then it was refrigerated for another another day. And now we're going to put this together. So, here we go. Here's my beautiful cheese. Nice and ready, firm. It's been fermented. Now, people are probably wondering, why do you want to put charcoal in your cheese? Number one, uh, what this does is it pulls all the toxins from your body. So that's a benefit. And number two, believe it or not, in France, in Italy, they actually use charcoal on their cheese, in their cheese, and it helps it ripen. Plus, since nuts are acidic, it actually, uh, the benefit is that it neutralizes your cheese. So, we're going to make a beautiful cheese where we're going to put, um, we're going to start off with putting a small, I don't know, should I make big ones? Let's see. It's nice to make some big ones. We're going to make some big cheese today. There we go. Now, we're going to just press this down a bit. There we go. And now we're going to sprinkle a little bit. i got to wipe this before I lick my finger. And that's a no-no. I am still on a juice fast. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to put a little bit of charcoal right into your the center of your cheese isn't that beautiful blackened cheese I dropped some on my paper is it gonna go yeah so this is really up to you how much you want to put of this but it is very good for you here we go put that aside and we're going to put some more cheese right on top so we're going to get a pretty nice cheese very simple it really is a benefit if you can do it mind you it's expensive if you buy activated charcoal here let's see how much this cost me uh this one cost me 20 oof, i can't even see with these glasses 24 dollars yeah that was 24 dollars and um so it's not cheap now uh if you want to make your own you got to make sure that you've got some good wood or whatever you're going to burn you could actually use your own but you have to have um you got to know where your wood comes from if it's been treated with anything so you really have to be careful if you're going to make your own charcoal so yes if you're going to make your own you really have to be careful how you do it okay so now all we're going to do is form it we're just going to press this we're going to make a big one, and then we're going to make a little cheese. Maybe we'll make the other one just a little different. There we go. So again, very simple. You know how I, how I form my cheese. I just kind of go around it. And if you get some on the outside, that's okay, because we will be putting some on the outside of our cheese. So I'm just going to push this one aside for now. And I'm going to do my other cheese. I should have just made one big one, eh? There we go. And we're also going to starch this. Now, what that charcoal does, it actually helps ripen the cheese. Because when your cheese is acidic, it just takes a little longer to ripen. And this is going to make that cheese have that great, strong taste to it. Oh, that's what I forgot. Okay. Don't do this. When you first put your layer of 
um, of your white part of the cheese. You want to sprinkle some smoke. I've got my smoke salt. If you don't have smoke salt, then you can simply use regular sea salt. But I will add some salt on top of it. The next batch I will uh, I will put some inside. But I'm just going to push this aside for now. And that is going to be such a beautiful, beautiful cheese. And we're going to make another cheese. Now this one here, we're just going to do it on the outside since it's a smaller cheese. So you could get, you know, get creative. You could do it only on the outside or you could do it on the inside. Or you know what? Hmm, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it like a gorgonzola, but I'm going to use just the charcoal. So I am going to push this down. So it really is up to you how you want to make it. So I'm just going to press this down really flat. Kind of marbleize it. And we're just going to sprinkle it here and there. And we're going to take this cheese and we're just going to fold it. One more time. Press it down. Am I in camera? Sorry, guys. There we go. We're going to press it down. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put some there. Oof, did I miss it completely, eh? Jeez. We're going to put some there. We're going to put some there. Some there. And we're just going to fold it one more time. And that's going to be how we're going to make this one. Just get creative. So this one here, when we cut it, it's going to be almost like a marble. Okay. There we go. That's perfect. Now we're going to... Oh, I did it again. I forgot the salt. Where's my head? Okay. In it goes. So now we're going to get a little bit of my uh, tapioca starch and we're going to just encase it. Okay, we're going to start off putting some on top and work my way around. Now it's easier to handle the cheese. And if it gets black on the outside, that's okay too because we're going to put some on the outside too. So it's all good. See, so much easier now. Now you can shape your cheese any way you want. Isn't it beautiful? This is going to be such a beautiful cheese. It just helps. It also helps make its own natural growth of bacteria, believe it or not. Now, I'm just hoping that my fridge is going to do what it has to do because... <laughs> I don't have a fridge just for cheese, unfortunately. I have a fridge that is got vegetables, that also has vegetables in it. So, I know someone mentioned he's got a fridge. Lucky you. I wish I had an extra fridge. Here we go. We're just going to push that aside. And we're going to dust the other cheese. Yeah, maybe I should just bring this over. Okay, 
flip it over. Some on top. This is a nice big cheese. Mind you, once it dries up, it really does shrink in size. But it's all good. There we go. We're just going to shape it. And you can make your cheese as high as you want it. As you rotate it, you can push it up. It's almost like making pottery. Except you're using your cheese. Or you can make it low and flat. There we go. We're just going to slowly flip it over. And I promise you, this cheese is simply fantastic. Your hands are going to get a little dirty, but that's okay. That's why we have soap and water. Okay, I'm just going to close this up. Old peanut butter jar. Recycle, guys. Okay. So I'm just going to push this away. Do I want to, uh, yeah, maybe I'll put some nice paper around this one. See, guys, my hands are always in water. A lot of people say, why are you touch? Why don't you wear gloves? But my hands are always in water. Now, we're just going to push this over to the side. Just clear off my counter because it is looking a little messy right now. Someone asked me, um... When I'm making my seitan, what do you do with the starch water? Well, you could actually take that starch water and put it in plants if you, if you want. Or, you know, I don't bother. I just kind of take it and I just dump it into the, uh, into the sink and down, down the drain it goes. But I've seen people actually, I don't remember where it was, they actually do something. I don't know if they um, let it settle and then they use that starch because I know a lot of people like starch doilies and so you can use that water uh, that starch water if you put it in a spray bottle you can just don't know how long it's gonna last for you but you could actually spray doilies if you do crochet work so I don't bother I just let it go down the drain and that's it that's the end of that so I'm just gonna put this aside and I'm just going to cut some paper for my cheese. Okay, here we go. Ooh, did I make it? <laughs> I'll have to push that up. I just have to push up the tower. There we go. I didn't quite... I didn't quite measure. How much. Or what the length should be. Okay. So here's number one. Now what I'm going to do again. Sprinkle it. But once I have the other one wrapped. There we go. Yeah, a little short on this one, eh? That's okay. It's going to shrink in size anyhow. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to tie it. Down. Does this one reach? We'll see. Ah, it just makes it. Okay, there we go. So there's our two cheeses. So again. We're going to add some salt to this on this side, on that side. If you don't want to, um, if you don't want to use or if you don't have the
smoky salt. You can simply, whatever salt you have on hand is going to be perfect. Okay, and now finally give it one more coat. There we go. I'm going to get it without making a mess. And there's our blackened ash smoky cheese. How simple is that? This is going to be very simple cheese. It's almost like a um, it's almost like a goat cheese, and this is just going to be fantastic. Now you can coat both sides if you want, or you can leave it that it's only coated on one side and uh, leave the bottom white. It's really up to you. But isn't that beautiful? Your friends will be in awe when you serve this cheese. Not only is it going to be delicious, but it has a lot of health benefits to it and very simply done. Okay, so here they are. Aren't they beautiful? Uh, I sprinkle some salt on top. I put some more um, of my smoked salt. Now this is a clubhouse smoked sea salt. My husband picked this up for me. I think he's always watching out for things that I for things that I like, and he I think he picked it up at Provigo uh, in uh, in the city. Actually, he didn't. He was out shopping and he saw the salt and he was all excited and he brought it home. He says, look what I got you. So, yes, you can probably find this at Provigo. All you have to do is look where the salts and the uh, the herbs are. So that's what I used inside the cheese. I kind of forgot to do it. But otherwise, next time when you, when you make it, uh, divide your cheese in half before you put the charcoal. Do put some of the salt and then put the charcoal and then the white on top again and then the salt so uh, but isn't it beautiful and like I said uh, using charcoal in, che in cheese has been around for a very long time they call it ash cheese not ass cheese <laughs> hash cheese <laughs> sorry that was a tongue twister not ass cheese and it is simply delicious it, detox, it detoxifies you, and along with the detoxification, it also has many, uh, many uh, benefits. It also helps the cheese ripen, so uh, it is a bonus. And besides all of that, doesn't it look pretty? How often have you put a piece of black cheese out for your friends? This will be uh, the talk of the party for sure. So uh, we're going to put this in a box. And all nice and prepared. I will make life easy for me so I don't have to worry about adding the charcoal later. I am adding my salt right into the box. There we go. And you really don't need that much. And we're going to simply just add some charcoal right onto the paper. You know, sometimes I have some bright ideas, don't you think? So when I do flip it, the charcoal is already there. And hopefully on the cheese and not just on the paper, right? Because <laughs> that would have been a waste. So I am going to take my spatula. I'm going to go for the big one first. In the box it goes. Now notice my box has, I'm not sure if you can see it, it has holes right there. Uh, that's okay because when I put the lid, I have it taped so that it keeps the cheese nice and moist. And here's the smaller one, mommy and baby cheese. So there we go. I am going to dump the rest of this right into the box. And this cheese is going to be simply amazing. One more sh shot with salt. It's going to do its thing and 
I'm not sure if I can flip it tomorrow. If I can flip it tomorrow, I'm going to wait an extra day. And then this is simply easy. Uh, I might be able to do it tomorrow too because it will firm up as it sits in the fridge. And I'm just going to flip it. And I'm going to flip it, keep flipping it. If I want to add more charcoal to it because I see it's getting too light, not a problem. I'll just sprinkle some charcoal on top. But I think it's good the way it is. It doesn't have to be super, super black in the back. But it will eventually get black. With the moisture, it's going to get darker. So guys, I hope you like this recipe. Um, now, how how long do you want to ferment it? That really is up to you. I would say at least let it age for um, at least three to four weeks before you eat it. Uh, the longer it ages, the better cheese is. It just picks up that nice, strong taste um, that you are accustomed in having with cheese. So the longer it sits and it ages, the better the cheese is going to be. But if you want it almost like a goat cheese, nice and creamy, I'd say at least three weeks. But, you know, play it by ear. You have to check your cheese. Uh, what I normally do is I always leave a little bit of cheese and I make a mini disc where I can taste it for taste and not break up the big discs. Last batch I did, I didn't make my mini disc, so I did have to cut cut open one of the cheeses to try it. So there you go, guys. I hope you like this recipe. And if you do do it and you like it, come back and tell me. Um, I would love to hear from you. And uh, if you like this type of recipe, nice little surprise, um, let me know. Leave a comment below. Share it with your friends. I'm sure you've got some friends that you'd like to maybe be, help them through their vegan journey. And this is a nice recipe they could try. It's very simple. It really is very simple. And you can have, you could be vegan and have your cheese too. So, oh, and I have another recipe I'm going to share with you. And wait till you see that one. I will be using the charcoal in that one too. So guys, thank you. And I'll see you in my next video.